What is up you guys? It is Brianna and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different on my channel and that is a full face tutorial using only my favorite products. Honestly, I don't remember the last time that I've done a video like this and I thought it'd be really fun if we just kind of like sat down, hung out today and just kind of like talked about makeup. And also I've been trying out a ton of different types of products that I normally don't gravitate towards and I also have been doing some new techniques and I just want to share them with you guys. Now, I'm just saying before we jump into it, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check out more inspiration, you can also check out my Instagram page and my TikTok, which is Brianna Faye as well. As always, the first thing that I'm going to do is prime my eyelids using my ABH eye primer because this stuff is literally liquid magic to me. Like, this stuff is just so good and so underrated. I even got my mom onto it. And my mom is one of those people, like, she wears makeup. But she doesn't wear as much makeup as like I do, but she definitely wears like a full face. And she didn't think that eye primer was going to make a difference. And then she tried this stuff and she's like, Brianna, like this stuff is really good. So today we're going to be using one of my favorite palettes and that is the Morphe 35C Everyday Chic. I feel like this is a really underrated holiday palette. Technically it is not a holiday palette, but to me it just kind of like screams it. Because you know we have these really nice kind of like darker greens in here. We have like these icy like wintry shades. And we also get a really nice pressed glitter. I honestly feel like a lot of people sleep on this palette. Like the color story is just so interesting. It kind of gives me like a 90s vibe. But the first shade I want to go in with is this kind of like khaki color called Weekend Plants. I'm just going to be taking it in my crease using this brush from Profusion. This is technically just going to be our transition shade today. But the brush that I'm using is called a Pointed Crease Eyeshadow Brush. I really need to get more brushes from Profusion because not only are they really affordable, but they're really nice. And also, I've washed these brushes probably about a hundred times now, and they have not lost their shape at all, which is awesome. So I'm just going to do a second layer, and again, I'm just like pushing that product right into my crease, and I'm also going to use it to round out my outer V. But this palette kind of gives me like a 90s vibe in a way, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's because it has like those burgundies and darker greens. And my parents' house is built in the 90s, so we have like a dark green carpeted floor, which is kind of weird looking. And they also have like burgundy and gold accents everywhere. So when I first saw this palette, I was like, ooh, that reminds me of 90s decor. I'm having the hardest time figuring out which shade I want to go in with next, because part of me really loves this green shade called Just Perfect. And then the other part of me likes this kind of like brownie green, and this one's called My Pleasure. You know what, I'm going to go in with the green one. And I'm just taking some on this brush from Luna Magic. I don't know what it's technically called, but it's like a crease brush. And I'm hoping that we get a little hint of green with this color, because I've used it in the past. And it kind of looks almost like a black when applied. So maybe with this khaki color being a transition shade, maybe I'll apply a little bit more green. You see what I mean, though? Like, it almost applies kind of like a brownish shade with like a hint of green to it. It's definitely not as green as it looks in the pan, so just keep that in mind if you do get this palette. It's still a really pretty shade and also it blends out really nice, especially for how deep it is. I mean like seriously, like that is only one layer. I haven't even built it up. Oh and I also forgot to mention, if you'd like to see my review on this palette, my initial one, I'll have that linked in the description box down below for you. You know, I was half expecting us to have to go in with that kind of like greenish brown I was talking about. I believe, yep, it's called My Pleasure, just to, you know, get a little bit more definition. But honestly, I think we got a lot of depth with that kind of like greenish shade that we just used. I don't know, I think it's turning out really cool. But off camera though, I am going to cut my crease. I'm just going to do a normal one though, like nothing fancy. And again, I'm just going to use that ABH eye primer. Now, after cutting the crease, as you can see, I have this really kind of like weird, harsh line right here, and we need to mask that. So I'm just going to go back in with that green shade that we used on this Profusion Firm Blending Eyeshadow Brush. And I'm just going to be packing that color right on that harsh line. And I'm taking it about maybe like a third the way in, just so when we apply the lid shades, then we can kind of like blend things into each other super easy. And again, like when you're doing this, you have to pack it down. Because otherwise you will disturb everything underneath and it'll be super, super hard to correct. Now you might find me a little crazy going in with this shimmer shade, but honestly I think it's going to look so cool in the end. So I'm going to go in with this kind of like icy pink shade called Melt Hearts. And I'm just taking it on this damp and flat shader brush, but I have been wanting to do a icy pink and dark green smoky eye for the longest time. So I thought we would do it today because I thought it would just look really interesting, especially with this green color being the way it is. 
but I'm just going to be applying it anywhere that that primer is still showing. But you see what I mean though, like the shimmers even in this palette, they're beautiful, they're so sparkly. Like, I don't know why people aren't talking about this palette. Like, it literally baffles me why people aren't. I feel like though, all my favorite palettes, people really just never talk about. And then the palettes that I'm more like, meh about, then that's like everybody's favorite. I don't know about you guys. And I am gonna do a couple of layers of this shimmer too, because I want it like super, super sparkly and like really wet metallic. And I also want to make sure it's like extra bright pink. You definitely don't have to build it up though if you don't want to. I just have a vision in my head and I want the lid to be like extra extra. And I'm just kind of like finessing whatever is left on my brush into that green mat that we have in this outer third. Just kind of doing like a little tapping motion. And I'm just going to go in with a little bit more green on my brush and pack it on where we did before. And then just slightly going over that icy pink. And then for liquid liner today, I'm just going to use this NYX Epic Ink. Literally my favorite. So good and also it's really affordable. And what I like about it is that it's a brush tip. It's super inky black. It dries down matte. It's also really easy to do a wing with. Because I have really shaky hands so I'm really picky with my eyeliners. And this one I have absolutely no issues with. But my favorite one over glitter though, this one doesn't really work that well over glitter. I like the ABH liquid liner. Because this one kind of has like a gel-like consistency even though it is a liquid. But it goes over glitter without feathering and it's also really easy to apply. And then for mascara, of course I'm going to go in with the Bad Gal Bang. I don't know about you guys, but I really almost prefer a mini over the full size. Not that the formula is different, I just feel like I can get like my lashes a little bit better. Maybe it's because I have baby hands and like my hands are super small so it's easier for me to work with a mini. But I feel like I can get like these little inner lashes so much easier and I also really enjoy it for the lower lashes too. I find that it's just like easier to get like all up in there. There's just something so pretty about Bad Gal Bang. Like don't get me wrong like the other Benefit mascaras are all really nice but this one is just so volumizing. It makes my lashes look so pretty and my lashes are so bad. Like they're so stubby. I barely have any and they have no curl to them. And this mascara just makes them look so pretty. You can also kind of like layer it up too if you want to get it like super like volumized, which is really nice. So for lashes, I'm going to use my new favorites. This is from Kiss. It is the Lash Couture Luxe Tensions in Russian Volume. Literally the closest mink alternative I have ever found. I can't find my tweezers, so I guess we're just going to go in. Normally I apply lashes with tweezers. I never use my fingers. I feel like I can't get like up close to my lashes as much. But you see what I mean though? Like these are just so pretty. I feel like I'm on my way to my first day of kindergarten with these hair clips. But you know what? It's better than getting foundation in my hair because that is so annoying. But the first thing that I'm going to do is prime my skin using my Milk Hydro Grip. Best primer. My absolute favorite. I do about a pump and a half. And I like to focus it more in the center of my face. And then kind of like distribute it outwards. And then for foundation today, I'm going to use this one from Morphe. I don't think I've used it on camera before. This is the Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint. I only recommend this product if you have combination to dry skin. If you're oily, do not get this one. But I like to apply it to my face while the primer is still kind of on the tacky side. I do not wait for it to dry down like I used to. I find that I just get a little bit more of like a gripping effect. So I try to work a little bit fast. But I will warn you with this product right here, it's really, really light coverage and it's also super watery. You can build it up though. But I feel like I have to go through a lot of this to get it where I want it to be. And then I'm just going to take my beauty blender and start blending it out. And also when I'm blending it out, I do not bring this foundation underneath my eyes anymore. I kind of bring it like right on my cheek. Is that really good foundation right there? Oh, you can like taste it. And trust me, it does not taste good. But, again, I'm just focusing this kind of like, you know like where your hollow of your eye socket is? I'm going right underneath of that. But this foundation is really nice if you want like a lighter coverage look. And also, I'll be honest, I used to really like full coverage and now I'm kind of over it. 
Like, don't get me wrong, like, a full coverage bee can be really nice here and there, but I just like a more natural skin-like look now. With dramatic eyeshadow, of course. I feel like I used to wear full coverage the way I did because I just didn't like how my acne looked. And now I just don't care. Like, if I have a pimple on my face, I could care less. I'm just gonna have my skin look like skin now. And this foundation actually has, like, a dropper. So I'm, like, dropping it onto my skin. I'm not actually, like, applying this to my skin. I'm, like, going, like, right next to it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more kind of, like, in my cheek area. A little bit down in here. Oh, I need more. See what I mean though? Like you go through a lot of this and it's also a little bit pricey for a Morphe foundation. I think it's like 20. I feel like a lot of people either really love this foundation or they hate it. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to like it either. This was actually one of the first lighter coverage products I used. And I did not have high hopes for it when I tried it. Like I was like, I'm going to hate this. Especially when I saw that it was really watery, but I tried it out anyways. And I'm so happy that I did because it really kind of made it so I started loving my skin a little bit more. Like I'm still, you know, kind of upset when I get like a pimple and whatnot, but I feel like I'm a little bit more comfortable wearing lighter coverage. And also if my redness shows through, I'm not so like, ugh, I hate that. I'm just kind of over masking things I hate. I just, I would rather, you know, you know, this is me, this is where I'm at kind of thing. Man, I look like I have, like, dark circles. I literally look like Uncle Fester right now. I'm so not used to filming this part. I did not realize I look like Uncle Fester this bad. And you would probably think that we were going to conceal those right away. And nope, we're going to go in with cream contour. I'm just using my Fenty Matchstick in Amber. So this is the difference I've been doing. So I've been kind of just doing, like, my forehead because I have a five head and I don't need it to look any bigger than it does. And I also just go right underneath my cheekbone right here and I go about but you see what I mean like I take it to this outer corner of my eye I don't bring it any farther in and I also don't round out anymore and I don't do my chin and then I'm just gonna take the butt of my beauty blender and do a stippling motion you can kind of see I'm going like up and down and that's how I'm blending it out I'm trying to find an affordable con cream contour if you know of one please let me know I'm having a hard time finding one though because a lot of them they look so orangey and other ones like I just I don't know like they just don't look appealing like the color just looks either way too dark or it has a funky undertone to it so if you know of a really good cream contour that you can find at the drugstore let me know because I'm really trying to find one so for concealer today I'm just gonna go in with this one from elf it is the hydrating camo concealer I really love this one so much if you haven't tried it and you're looking for a good hydrating one this one's bomb and I also really like this 16 hour, but since my skin's been a little bit more dry, I just gravitate towards this one. And that's all the concealer I'm going to do. Like, I kind of just bring it up into this inner corner and about like that. Like, I don't like a lot of concealer anymore. I know a lot of people like to do, like, the triangle and, like, everywhere that they would highlight. But I feel like it's just too cakey and too much now. So I'm just going to take that beauty blender and I'm just going to take the pointed side that we applied the foundation with, or blended it out. And I'm just doing right underneath my eye. You can kind of see I start kind of in this inner tear duct area and then blend it outwards. And I also kind of use the edge of my beauty sponge to kind of like make my eyeshadow a little bit more crisp looking. Then I just take the butt of my beauty blender, the part that we used to blend out the contour, go over the area that I contoured just a little bit just get rid of any harsh lines and then also bring it up around my temple again and then for powder today I'm just gonna go in with this one from Laura Mercier it's the translucent loose setting powder I actually took the sifter out the other day over on my TikTok page but I'm just going to be applying it literally to my whole face I start my under eye though and then I work my way outwards because lately I have been getting like kind of a little oily around my nose area. Especially when I'm filming. Like sometimes I get a little bit warm because my lights get so hot. So I find if I powder here first I don't get any like cakiness. And then I also go in my smile line next. Like really make sure I get a lot of powder in here. Because that's another area I will crease really fast. 
So for powder contour today, I'm just going to use this palette from Koki. It is your contour palette, I believe is what it's called. And I'm just going to mix these two shades right here. I'm just going to be taking this mixture on this Olimar, um, what are you called, a complexion brush. It's just an angled little br blush brush in my opinion. But I'm just going to be taking it anywhere that we apply that Fenty matchstick. So you know, underneath my cheekbones and making sure I blend it upwards and around the perimeter of my face. And I do like to go a little bit heavy on the contour powder right now, just to make sure I get a lot of definition in my face, especially since I'm filming. I feel like if I don't apply enough, I look kind of like Casper the Ghost. So you definitely don't have to apply as much as I am. But since I'm filming, I do like to go a little bit heavy handed. And I also just take a little bit underneath my jawline ever so slightly. I used to use cream contour here, but over time I felt like it almost gave me like 5 o'clock shadow and also it's just really hard to blend out a lot of the time. So I've been using powder and I love it so much more. It looks so much more natural too. Now blush is one of those products for me, I have a couple of favorites because again like I kind of switch it up depending on the eye look that I'm doing because you know like a pink blush doesn't go with like everything. But these two right here are my favorites right now, um, both of them are from Colourpop. And this one right here is the Pressed Powder Blush in Catch My Vibe, and this one's a little bit more on the pinky side. And I also really like this mauve one, and this one is called Coast to Coast. Since we have like a dark, kind of like grungy eye look going on, I'm just going to go in with Coast to Coast. I feel like it's going to match a lot better. I mean, you could use Catch My Vibe, but I don't know. I don't think it would match as well. But I'm just taking it on this Luxie um, Large Angled 504 brush. And I'm just stippling it right on my cheekbone. Kind of where people normally apply their highlighter, I like to apply blush because I feel like it just makes it a little bit more lifted looking. And also I find that it just makes my face not look as round, which if I can make my face not look as round, I will do it. I don't know, I think it's just a really pretty color. Color Pops blushes though are one of my favorite formulas. If you've never tried them, they're just really nice. They usually have like a medium buildable formula too, so if you want like a super blushy look, you can do it. And if you also want something a little bit more natural, it's really easy to do as well. Now highlighter for me is another one of those that I have a lot of favorites of, but these are my most used. And again, they're both from ColourPop. This really big one, this one is called Eura Catch. It's kind of like a pink champagne color. And of course you guys know I'm obsessed with Flexitarian, and this is kind of like a white gold. So the highlighter I'm going to use though is Flexitarian because this one's a little bit more on the icy side and I feel like it's going to pair really well with the eye look. And I'm just taking it on this highlighting brush from Kaleidos and applying it right slightly above my cheekbone, just a little bit. But ooh, she's blinding. I don't know about you guys, but a blinding highlight will forever be my favorite. That and an inner corner highlight. So let's get rid of this like crusty lip situation and I'm just going to use my favorite lip liner. This one is from Gerard Cosmetics. I really like their lip liners. They have by far one of my favorite formulas. And this one is in Sugar and Spice. It's kind of like a cool tone nudie color. I'm just saying if you hear any noises, it's Winnie. She is giving herself a bath and she does not want to leave the room. Lucky me. And I'm just going to make sure I'm overlining because I got small lips. And then for a bullet lipstick, I'm just going to go in with this one from ABH. This is the matte lipstick in the shade Honey. It's kind of like a cool tone nude color too. It's just a little bit lighter than the lip liner though. So now we're going to start working on the lower lash line. And I just mixed that green and khaki color like a one-to-one -one ratio on this brush from Luxie. This is a 231 small taper blending brush. And I'm just going to run it right underneath my lower lash line doing back and forth motions. But you see what I mean though? Like these shades are so pigmented. So as you have that lower lash line all nice and smoky, now we're going to be doing the inner corner highlight and I'm just going to go in with this kind of like icy champagne shade called Cheers to You. So I'm just going to be taking this shade on a Sigma pencil brush and really like packing it into that inner corner just to make it really nice and bright. Ooh, that's pretty. I was kind of debating if I should go in with that pink shimmer shade instead. I'm honestly happy that we used this one. I feel like it just really brightened it up even more. Oh yeah. I feel like this shade would even make a really good highlighter. Like if you want something really icy. So I'm just going to take Bad Girl Bang and do my lower lashes. But you see what I mean though? Like I can get like all up in there so much easier this way with a mini. 
So the last thing that we are going to be doing is using setting spray. These two right here are my ride or die favorites. I mean, like there's a lot of setting sprays I like, but these two are the ones that I always go back towards. And the first one is this one called um, the Luminous Setting Spray. This one is from Morphe. This one I really like because it gives the skin a nice, dewy, healthy glow. There's no pigment in it. There is no glitter. It just has like that really pretty sheen on the skin. And also, it is non-aerosol. I don't know if you like this too, but aerosols really weird me out. So Morphe having a lot of aerosol ones, I don't really like to use them because of it. But I love that this one's in a pump. And I also absolutely love the Urban Decay All Nighter. This one is so long wearing. Like, if I want my makeup to last all day, this is what I use. I know a lot of you guys like that dewy skin-like finish, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to use the Morphe one. And I'm just going to literally drench my face with it. And also, the mister of this one is almost identical to the Continuous Setting Spray. So if you like how that one works, you'll love this one. It also it smells kind of like apples. But it's not like overwhelming either, like it dissipates really fast. I just love how it looks though. Such a pretty mist. I will recommend though, if you do use this one, go a little bit closer to your face than you normally would because the mister on this one is so fine. I find that I use less product if I go a little bit closer. I am seriously going to have the hardest time washing this look off tonight because I have wanted to do a baby pink and dark green smoky eye for the longest time and I don't know why I waited so long. I think I waited though because I couldn't find the right palette because some palettes like they would have the colors I was looking for but the greens would be too bright or the pinks would be too neon and it just didn't have the vibe that I was looking for. But this palette for some odd reason like the colors just look like they would go so well together and I'm just happy that we did it. I think it's just so unique and different. By far one of my favorite looks I have ever done. But yeah, so in the comments down below, let me know if you'd like to see more full face tutorials. I'm not too sure if you guys like them or not, but if you'd like to see them, I'd be happy to film them for you guys. And also let me know if you'd like to see more looks using this palette. But as always though, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Faye as well. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!